Making a proportional symbol map with ArcMap is pretty easy, although the results may not be immediately suitable for a final map. In this video, I'll show you how to make both points and lines into proportional symbols using the attribute information attached to them. Having numeric attribute information attached to features is key, because this is how ArcMap knows how to size the features relative to one another. If your features don't have attribute information, you may be able to join a table that includes it, or if you don't have that many features, it may just be easier to enter the data by hand. So let's start with point features. Here I have point features representing all the different countries that Middlebury students have studied abroad in, I believe between 2006 and 2009. I also have line features that show a line from Middlebury to these countries, but we'll deal with those in just a second, so I'll turn those off. So if I go into my country points feature class here and open the attribute table, you can see that each record includes the country name and also a number of students that have studied in that country over that three year period. And what I want to do is size each of these point symbols so that it correlates to the number of students that have studied in that country. So I'll close the table there and go and right click and open properties for those country points. And then under the symbology tab, there's an option for quantities. And what this will do is allow you to make graduated colors or graduated symbols or proportional symbols using a particular field in that attribute table to supply the values. So to start off with, let's make graduated symbols. And we'll choose number of students as the field that we want to use. And the way that graduated symbols work is that it uses increasingly large symbols to represent a certain range of values within that field. So you can see that the circles don't necessarily increase proportional to the size of the values in that range, but they do get larger. And if I hit apply here, you can see it gives us a sense of which countries have the most students studying in it and which have the least. This is really handy if we have a range of values in this field that isn't necessarily linear, so that countries that have the most students in this case have far more students than the countries that have the least. And you can see that if we were to come over here to proportional symbols, and choose number of students as the value. This is actually going to make circles whose size is proportional to the values in that field. And you can see that the circles are a lot larger here in Europe compared to the circles in Africa and in some of the South American countries because there are many, many more students that study in Europe than there are in these other places. So you'll have to decide whether you want to use graduated or proportional symbols for your map. And a lot of this has to do, as I said, with the distribution of data within your field. So for this, I'll use proportional symbols. And you can see that the option here is to set a minimum value, and then it will just base the size of the maximum circle on the size of that minimum circle. So if I was to change that size, maybe increase it to 6, you can see my maximum circle size has grown dramatically. And I get these very overinflated circles on my map. What I'd like to have ideally, move that back down to three, is circles that overlap a bit, but don't overlap in all places. So you can see based on the high degree of overlap in Europe that Europe is a very popular place. And in my final map, I can actually make these bubbles semi-transparent in order to see which countries they're associated with that are on the map below them. If I didn't have the ability to make the circles transparent, I might want to make these circles even smaller so that I could actually see the countries around them. Or I might even want to include an inset map for Europe Europe that was at a larger scale so that it would be easier to see which circles represented which country. I'm going to hit OK here, and there's our very quick proportional symbol point map. Now, if I wanted to make these circles transparent, as I was saying, I could come back in here to properties and display and set my transparency down to, say, 50%. The problem with this is that it just makes the entire layer transparent rather than making each individual circle transparent. So while we can now sort of see which circle is related to which country, we can't see overlapping circles, which would be really nice. And in order to do that, you have to set individual object transparency with an illustrator. So it would be good right now to export this map to illustrator with no transparency. Because remember that if you export with transparency, it will rasterize these features, and we don't want that. So I'll make that transparency back to 0%. And then you would export this map to Illustrator, select those individual objects, and then make them transparent. Now let's look at our line features. So I'll turn off my points, turn my lines on, and you can use a similar proportional symbol strategy for lines. So if I come in here to Properties for my country lines, and go to Symbology and Quantities, under Proportional Symbols, I can choose a value field. And then I've got this same field called Number of Students. And then you can also set a minimum value and a maximum value. 
and if I hit apply here, you'll see that there's a very large range between my minimum value and my maximum value. And the reason for this, and the reason that it's so much larger than the range in the point symbols, is that in the point symbols, it was actually making relative areas of circles. And so there was a geometric relationship between their diameters or linear dimensions and the actual values within that field. Whereas in this case, there's a linear relationship between the values in that field and the linear dimensions of these lines. It's making just the width of the line relative to the values in that field, so the width is going to increase much, much faster. So we could set this minimum value down to even less than 1, let's say 0.1. Okay, and now it's a little bit easier to see the difference between those lines, but at the same time, it's going to be very difficult to see these minimum values that are only 0.1 width in size. So this might be an example where we would use graduated symbols as opposed to proportional symbols. Let's choose number of students. I'll hit apply, and you can see that putting these into categories constrains that maximum size, even with a reasonable minimum size. I can change the maximum size to something, let's say, like 10 and now those stand out a little bit more. We could also increase the number of classes, so if I wanted this to be more fluid breaks, I could make many more classes, let's say 32 classes, and now it would nearly be proportional symbols. There are so many different classes in here uh, that it's really increasing very incrementally from one to the next. The problem with using proportional symbols on lines, and especially where you have a very dense map with a lot of lines like this, is that it's just very difficult to read, especially if they're all converging on a single point. You really need to spend some time organizing these lines by hand, and it's very difficult to do that within ArcMap. So while ArcMap can give you a good start, imagining what sizes you might want to use for these proportional linear symbols, it's really not that well suited for making final maps that use proportional symbols with lines in most cases. So you may either want to use ArcMap as just a starting place for calculating these widths and getting a sense for how this constellation of lines will work on the page, and then export it to Illustrator in order to do some final touch-ups, or you may just want to do away with the ArcMap process altogether and construct your proportional lines right in Illustrator using some tools that I'll show you in the next video.